डियर स्टूडेंट्स जरा एक मिनट लिए सोचो कि हीट की एग्जिस्टेंस साडे कि अहम है साडा शरीर आले दुआले के वेरिएबल टेंपरेचर्स विच सस्टेन करने लिए एक थर्मल बैलेंस बना के रखता है जिस तो बिना जीवन चल ही नहीं सकता ए थर्मल बैलेंस शरीर द्वारा हीट लॉस अते हीट गेन दोनों विच एक एक्यूरेट एंड डेलीकेट बैलेंस मेंटेन करता है कुल मिला के धरती भी एक योजा थर्मल बैलेंस बना के रखती है ये तो तुम जानते ही हो कि असी सूरज तो आ रही ऊर्जा तो गर्मी प्राप्त करते हैं इना डेलीकेट थर्मल बैलेंसिस छोटी मोटी डिस्टरबेंस भी कई सीरियस कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस पैदा कर सकती है मनुखा विच एक किसे बीमारी कारण हो सकती है अते फीवर ज चिल कुछ भी पैदा कर सकती है इसे तरह विज्ञानी वातावरण विच ग्रीन हाउस गैसेस दे वदन नाल पूरी धरती दे जीवानु बीमार होन दे डर नाल परेशान हां क्योंकि इस दा असर हर एक जीव ते पवेगा मेनू लगदा है तुसी आज दे इस पार्ट दा विषय गेस कर ही लिया होना यस टुडे वी आर टू स्टडी कैलोरीमीट्री फ्रॉम द चैप्टर हीट टुडे you will learn to measure heat but first let me share its learning objectives with you on completion of this topic learners will be able to define heat capacity and specific heat capacity for a substance and state the mathematical expressions define molar specific heat capacity and state its mathematical expression explain the term calorimetry describe melting fusion vaporization and sublimation explain the concept of latent heat of a substance define latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization and state the mathematical expressions when a fixed amount of heat is given to a fixed mass of a substance the rise in temperature is different in case of different substances in other words when a fixed range of temperature is maintained for a fixed amount of mass the amount of energy is different in case of different substances this indicates that nature of substance is one of the important factors in the study of thermal phenomena let me show you some related activities we take two metallic spherical balls of same size but different materials observe that both the balls are placed over a container filled with water when we boil the water the temperature of the balls become equal to the temperature of steam if we drop the two balls on an ice slab the two balls sink to different depths how come we know that they have same temperature the balls sinking to different depths simply mean that they possess different amounts of heat energy so they have done different amounts of work we can not measure heat directly but can detect its effect on a substance changes in heat can usually be detected as changes in temperature it has been observed that thermal energy depends on temperature of the substance however we can say that temperature is one of the factors that affect the thermal energy of a substance an object with a higher temperature can release more heat than the same object at a lower temperature but temperature is only one of the factors affecting the amount of heat transferred by an object thermal energy also depends on the number of particles that is the size or mass of the substance 
imagine the difference in total energy between a spoon of boiling water and a bucket of boiling water. This suggests that amount of thermal energy also depends on mass of the substance. Thermal energy also depends on the type of particles of the object. To find out the effect of type of substance on the amount of thermal energy in it, we again conduct an experiment with turpentine oil instead of water. Let us heat up 200 milliliters of turpentine oil to the same temperature of 30 degrees Celsius as we did for water. It takes lesser time than water to acquire the same temperature. Hence, it needs less amount of heat. Warming 200 milliliters of water from 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius needs 8300 joule of heat whereas warming 200 milliliters of turpentine oil from 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius needs 3550 joule of heat. This shows that amount of thermal energy also depends upon the type of substance. On the basis of these observations, we can say the quantity of heat denoted by delta Q required to raise the temperature of a given substance depends on the mass of the substance to be heated or delta Q is proportional to mass M, the quantity of heat delta Q also depends on the change in temperature produced in the substance. That is, delta Q is proportional to delta T. On combining, we get delta Q is proportional to M into delta T or delta Q is equal to the product of the constant and M delta T. It implies that every substance has a unique value for the amount of heat absorbed or rejected to change the temperature of its unit mass by one unit. This quantity is referred to as specific heat capacity of the substance and is represented by small c. So, we rewrite the relation for quantity of heat as delta Q equal to the product of C, M and delta T or C equal to 1 by M into delta Q by delta T. We can define the specific heat capacity of a substance as specific heat capacity of a substance is the quantity of heat energy required by unit mass of the substance to raise the temperature of the substance through a unit degree. In SI system of units, the unit for energy is joule, unit for mass is kilogram and that of temperature is degree Celsius. Therefore, the unit for specific heat capacity would be joule per kilogram per degree Celsius or joule per kilogram per Kelvin. However, in CGS system, the unit for specific heat capacity would be calorie per gram per degree Celsius. Each material is able to hold a certain amount of thermal energy at a given temperature due to what we call as its specific heat. Hon dasso, do pair vele kise nadi de kande utte, twade pair anu paani ate red de temperature vich bohat zyada farak nahi lagda. Paani thanda ate red garam nahi lagdi. Ise tarah sadak de kinare footpath comfortable mein soos honda hai. Jadon ki kali sadak pair anu sek maar di hai. In a dona udarana vich, vasta de temperature same han, per wak wak specific heat values karke, unada rate of heating wak hai. Pani di specific heat value bohat zyada hundi hai. Pav, 
ਇਹ ਗਰਮ ਹੋਣ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੀ ਹੀਟ ਐਬਜ਼ੋਰਬ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੈ ਦੂਜੇ ਸ਼ਬਦਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਦੋਂ ਇਹ ਠੰਡਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੀ ਹੀਟ ਰਿਲੀਜ਼ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੈ ਇਸੇ ਗੁਣ ਕਾਰਨ ਆਟੋਮੋਬਾਈਲ ਰੇਡੀਏਟਰਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾਣੀ ਦੀ ਵਰਤੋਂ ਕੂਲੈਂਟ ਦੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਅਤੇ ਸੇਕ ਜਾਂ ਟਕੋਰ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਗਰਮ ਪਾਣੀ ਦੀ ਬੋਤਲ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਪਾਣੀ ਦੀ ਹਾਈ ਸਪੈਸੀਫਿਕ ਹੀਟ ਕੈਪੈਸਿਟੀ ਕਾਰਨ ਹੀ ਇਹ ਧਰਤੀ ਨਾਲੋਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਲੋ ਰੇਟ ਤੇ ਗਰਮ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਨਤੀਜਤਨ ਸਮੁੰਦਰ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਠੰਡੀ ਹਵਾ ਜਾਂ ਕੂਲ ਬ੍ਰੀਜ਼ ਆਉਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਇਸੇ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਰੀਰ ਦਾ ਵੱਡਾ ਹਿੱਸਾ ਪਾਣੀ ਹੈ ਜਦੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਐਕਸਰਸਾਈਜ਼ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਮਸਲਸ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੀ ਹੀਟ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਿਊਸ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਨ ਪਰ ਫਿਰ ਵੀ ਸਾਡਾ ਬੋਡੀ ਟੈਂਪਰੇਚਰ ਸੌਖੇ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਵੱਧ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਪਦਾਰਥ ਦੀ ਸਪੈਸੀਫਿਕ ਹੀਟ ਉਸ ਦੀ ਸੋਲਿਡ ਲਿਕੁਇਡ ਜਾਂ ਗੈਸ਼ੀਅਸ ਸਟੇਟ ਤੇ ਵੀ ਡਿਪੈਂਡ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੈ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਕਿ ਆਈਸ ਅਤੇ ਸਟੀਮ ਦੋਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਸਪੈਸੀਫਿਕ ਹੀਟ ਪਾਣੀ ਦੀ ਸਪੈਸੀਫਿਕ ਹੀਟ ਨਾਲੋਂ ਤਕਰੀਬਨ ਅੱਧੀ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ the change in temperature of a substance when a given quantity of heat is absorbed or rejected by it is characterized by a quantity called the heat capacity or thermal capacity of that substance thermal capacity of a substance is defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of the whole substance through 1 degree celsius or 1 kelvin therefore heat capacity of a substance is defined as s equal to delta q upon delta t here delta q is the amount of heat absorbed or rejected by a substance of mass m when it undergoes a temperature change delta t then the specific heat capacity of that substance c is equal to s upon m the specific heat capacity of a substance is also defined as the amount of heat capacity per unit mass therefore the unit for heat capacity would be joule per degree celsius or joule per kelvin however amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of a substance depends on total number of atoms or molecules contained in the substance and not on the mass of the substance if the amount of substance is specified in terms of moles instead of mass we can define heat capacity per mole of the substance by molar specific heat if n be the number of molecules then molar specific heat represented by capital c is equal to s upon n as heat capacity s is equal to delta q upon delta t the molar specific heat capital c is equal to 1 upon n into delta q divided by delta t or molar specific heat of a substance is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 mole of the substance through a unit 1 kelvin or 1 degree celsius by definition 1 mole of any substance is a quantity of the substance whose mass in gram is numerically equal to its molecular mass capital m thus the number of moles n in a given m gram of the substance is equal to mass per unit molecular mass that is m by capital m therefore molar specific heat is also equal to capital m upon m into delta q divided by delta t or capital c is equal to mc it is measured in joule per mole per degree celsius or joule per mole per kelvin in metals one mole of each metal contains same number of atoms that is avogadro's number therefore molar specific heat of all metals at room temperature is nearly constant however in case of specific heat capacity of gases 
additional conditions may be needed to define molar specific heat. In this case, heat transfer can be achieved by keeping either pressure or volume constant. If a gas be held under constant pressure during the heat transfer, then it is called the molar specific heat capacity at constant pressure and is denoted by Cp. While if the volume of the gas is maintained during the heat transfer, then the corresponding molar specific heat capacity is called molar specific heat capacity at constant volume denoted by Cv. While discussing thermal capacity, it is worth describing water equivalent of a substance also. Water equivalent of a substance is the mass of water which would absorb or evolve the same amount of heat as is done by the substance in rising or falling through the same range of temperature. It is represented by small w. We know that to raise the temperature of m gram of a substance through temperature range delta T, amount of heat required is delta Q equal to C m delta T. Let the same amount of heat be required to raise the temperature of W gram of water through the same range of temperature. That is, delta Q is equal to W delta T. The value of specific heat of water here is 1 calorie per gram per degree Celsius. This shows that water equivalent of a body is equal to the product of mass of the body and specific heat of the body. Notice that the thermal capacity and water equivalent of a substance are numerically equal. But thermal capacity is measured in terms of joules or calories and water equivalent in grams. Sare padarat, solid, liquid, ja gas vicho kise ik state which exist kar dehan. Ik state to duji which transition no change of state keha janda hai. Solid to liquid, ate liquid to gas, ja in other reverse processes arm hon wali changes of state han. Ek kise vi padarat naal. वातावरण विच होन वाली एक्सचेंज ऑफ हीट कारण होंदे है चेंज ऑफ स्टेट्स पांच प्रकार दियां होंदियां हन फ्रिज चो बाहर पे मक्खन दा पिघल जाना सुकण ले पाए कपड़ेयां चो पानी दा भाव बन के उड़ जाना जां सवेर वेले पौधेयां दे पत्तेयां ते तरेल दियां बूंदा जमनियां चेंज ऑफ स्टेट्स दे आम उदाहरण हन आओ तानु कुछ उदाहरण और दिखाइए Change of solid to liquid is known as melting, whereas liquid to solid is freezing. Change of liquid to gas is known as vaporization. Gas to liquid known as condensation. And solid to gas known as sublimation. To study the change of state on heating or cooling, let us see an activity. Take 1 kilogram solid ice cubes in a glass beaker fitted with a heating device and a mercury thermometer. Note the initial temperature of ice. It is 0 degree Celsius. Start heating the beaker with a constant heat source. Observe the temperature of contents in the beaker and draw a graph between heat energy and temperature. Note that there is no change in the temperature so long there is ice in the beaker. In this process, the temperature of the system does not change even though heat is being continuously supplied. The heat supplied is being utilized 
in changing the state from solid to liquid. On heating the water further, it is used to increase its temperature. So, adding heat does not always increase the temperature. We can again say that the temperature does not change during a change in state. So, during a state change, how could there be a change in heat without a change in temperature? Let me tell you, when heat goes into either the substance can experience a raise in temperature or undergo a change of state. When there is no change in temperature, then it is clear that the absorbed energy is not used to speed up the molecules. This means there should be an increase in potential energy or the energy is used to change the bonding between the molecules. So, when heat comes into a substance, energy comes into the substance. That energy could be used to increase the temperature or that heat could be used to increase the potential energy of the molecules causing a change in state. Let us continue with all five changes of states one by one. We will start with melting. During the change of state, heat energy is used to break the bonds between the molecules of the substance. Molecules of ice are strongly bonded to one another, thus forming a rigid solid. When heat is added to ice, these bonds are broken and the molecules acquire a higher potential energy state. And water is formed. However, the temperature remains same. It is clear that energy is required to break the molecular bonds of ice and this is how the heat is used. To measure this energy required for melting, we use an important term that is latent heat of fusion. Latent heat of fusion of ice is numerically equal to the quantity of heat required to completely change 1 kilogram of ice into water without any change in its temperature. We know that in physics, melting and freezing are just opposite phenomena. So, latent heat of fusion and latent heat of melting are the same. In general, we can say that latent heat of melting of a substance is equal to the quantity of heat required to completely change 1 kilogram of a solid into liquid at its melting point without any change in its temperature. Or latent heat of fusion of a substance is equal to the quantity of heat liberated to completely change 1 kilogram of a liquid into solid at its freezing point without any change in its temperature. We generally represent the latent heat of fusion by capital L. Hence, if small m kilogram of a solid substance is converted into its liquid form, then the energy required for this conversion is equal to m into l. It is clear from this relation that SI unit of latent heat of fusion is joule per kilogram or it can be calorie per gram. Whereas, the temperature at which solid converts into liquid is known as its melting point. For pure ice, melting point is 0 degree Celsius and the latent heat of fusion is equal to 335 kilojoule per kilogram or 80 calorie per gram. Now, we know that ice changes from solid state to liquid state when heat is absorbed. Can you think what will happen if it is heated for a longer time? As the heat is used by solid ice to convert into liquid water 
by changing molecular bonding. Similarly, heat enters a liquid to change the molecular bonding when it boils or evaporates into a gas. The process of boiling or evaporation is also known as vaporization. To measure the energy required for vaporizing a substance, we use the term latent heat of vaporization. When we heat 1 kilogram of water, its temperature starts increasing. When the water starts boiling, the temperature reaches nearly 100 degrees Celsius. As boiling starts, temperature becomes constant again. Now, we plot a graph between heat energy and temperature. Note that during heating of water, temperature increases at a constant rate and becomes constant during boiling. When water is completely changed into vapor state and heating is continued further, there would be a further rise in temperature. The quantity of heat required to change 1 kilogram of water at 100 degrees Celsius into water vapor at the same temperature is called latent heat of vaporization of water. We know that in physics, vaporization and condensation are just opposite phenomena. In vaporization, heat enters a liquid to change the molecular bonding into a gas. In an inverse way, heat leaves a gas to change the molecular bonding when the gas condenses into a liquid. Hence, latent heat of vaporization and latent heat of condensation is the same thing. In general, we can say that latent heat of vaporization of a substance is equal to the quantity of heat required to completely change 1 kilogram of liquid substance into gas at its boiling point without any change in its temperature. We generally represent the latent heat of vaporization by L. Hence, if m kilogram of a liquid substance is converted into its gaseous form, then the energy required for this conversion is equal to m into L. Vaporization is possible in two ways, that is boiling and evaporation. Boiling is the rapid process of vaporization of a liquid or evaporation is the slow process of vaporization of a liquid. In this process, molecules of a liquid become gaseous spontaneously. Evaporation of a liquid occurs at a stage when the high energy molecules of that liquid leave the surface. High energy molecules then nikas karan liquid the heat content decrease ho janda hai. Jis karke is the temperature vi cut janda hai. Itho ek important result nikalda hai that evaporation causes cooling. Evaporation no liquid the gradual disappearance samjha ja sakta hai. Is lay is zaruri hai ke liquid molecules the surface the nede hon ate una coal any kinetic energy hove ki o intermolecular forces overcome kar sakan. Ajehe criteria siraf thore jehe hi molecules pure kar ponde han. Ate rate of evaporation limited renda hai. Garmiya which sade sharir cho pasina evaporate hon nal e naturally thanda renda hai. This is how evaporating sweat cools the human body. Ise tara mitti de bane kadya ate surayya vich rakhya paani thanda renda hai. Clothes dry more rapidly on a windy day than on a still day. Similarly, clothes dry more rapidly on a dry day than 
on a humid day. Formation of clouds, fog, mist and dew are examples of condensation. Have you seen naphthalene balls? What happens to the naphthalene balls after some time? The naphthalene balls become smaller and smaller and disappear. Let me tell you why. They change from solid state to gaseous state directly. This process is called sublimation. In the process of sublimation, heat enters a solid to change the molecular bonding and it sublimates into a gas. However, opposite of sublimation is known as deposition. Now, I will like to introduce calorimetry. Calorimetry means measurement of heat. A system is said to be isolated if no exchange or transfer of heat occurs between the system and its surroundings. When different parts of an isolated system are at different temperatures, heat get transferred from the part at higher temperature to the part at lower temperature. The heat lost by the part at higher temperature is equal to the heat gained by the part at lower temperature. Also, when a body at higher temperature is brought in contact with another body at lower temperature, the heat lost by the hot body is equal to heat gained by the colder body, provided no heat is allowed to escape to the surroundings. Heat always flows from a body at higher temperature to the one at a lower temperature till the temperature of the two bodies becomes equal. At this stage, the two bodies are said to have attained thermal equilibrium. I hope you are not left with any doubts about calorimetry. Let us conclude today's topic by summarizing all that we have learnt by now. The quantity of heat delta Q required to raise the temperature of a given substance is equal to the product of C, M and delta T. Here C is the specific heat capacity of the substance. Specific heat capacity of a substance is the quantity of heat energy required by unit mass of the substance to raise its temperature by 1 degree. Thermal capacity of a substance is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of the whole substance through 1 degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin. Heat capacity of a substance can be defined as S equal to delta Q upon delta T. If N be the number of molecules, then molar specific heat capital C is equal to 1 upon N into delta Q by delta T. Heat required to completely change 1 kilogram of a solid substance into liquid at its melting point without any change in its temperature is known as its latent heat of fusion. If L be the latent heat of fusion and M kilogram its mass, then the energy required for the conversion of this solid into liquid is equal to M into L. Whereas, amount of heat required to convert 1 kilogram of a liquid into 1 kilogram of gas without any change in its temperature is known as latent heat of vaporization. So, that's the end of today's topic. Here are some questions for you. The first question is define evaporation and the definition is evaporation is the slow process of vaporization of a liquid. The next question is name the process in which solid converts into a gas directly. The answer is sublimation. Another question name the process of ice changing into water. The answer is this process is called 
melting. Another question, define boiling and the answer is boiling is the rapid process of vaporization of a liquid. Menu asks hai ke calorimetry ate changes of states te sare concepts to anu samajai honge. Part te tyan den lei sare anda tanwad. Agli class vich fir milange.